Uh, political columnist, commentator Ellis Hennigan with us, and also Trump supporter and former Apprentice contestant Aaron Elmore. Wanted more specifics from your candidate? I think they're starting to unfold and come out now, especially when it comes to foreign policy. And I agree with Mike. He is winning. He is getting the votes. And I think it's because Mer America is ready for a change. They're tired of Washington politics as usual. And they see this fresh voice in Donald Trump, and it's really resonating with them. And he's getting the votes. So whatever he's doing is certainly working. So I think you just got to keep on watching and stay tuned. All right. Ellis, let's negotiable policy, or do you think this is workable policy that people will go for? Well, I think people are going for it, and so far it hasn't hurt him at all. I think, you know, when he spoke about some different diplomatic relations with Japan, I think those sound completely reasonable. My grandfather's a 95-year-old World War II veteran, and we just had an hour-long conversation about some of Donald Trump's international relations and foreign policy ideas. And you know what? They do sound sounds to be like they would be certainly good ideas. And if we think what's going on in the United States is working right now, clearly it's not. ISIS is a tremendous problem that's only getting bigger. So we do need some sort of change and we need some sort of shakeup. So here we go. Real Maybe this is the shakeup that we need. Real quick, Ellis, is that the headline? Plenty to talk about. Let's welcome in our guest, Daily Beast contributor and comedian Dean Obadala, not the Trump supporter, and joining us, a Trump supporter, we welcome back Erin Elmore. She was a, a contestant on The Apprentice, and as I mentioned, a Trump supporter. So that's what we have here. Before we get your guys' take on it, let's listen to the question. This is just when we uh, was very passionate concerning this. Do you think this is is going to slow down and die out or do you think we're going to continue I mean, it has to it's just too boring already like enough is enough with this however to say that donald trump is behind the national Enquirer is just ridiculous someone's had a little too much easter candy i think yesterday i mean enough is enough <laughs> with that and i have read in a few publications um that they were saying some of rubio's inner circle might have been responsible but trump has come out and said he is not responsible the national Enquirer is you know their own entity and yeah they're endorsing trump but trump didn't plant this story like i said last week Listen, the National Enquirer is not exactly Newsweek, okay? We get that. However, they have broken some big stories regarding Tiger Woods and his infidelity, John Edwards and his infidelity, some things regarding O.J. Simpson. So the, the National Enquirer has, you know, sunk their teeth into a few stories that ended up to be really, really true, and they blew the lid off of those stories. So we shall sh see what happens here. But to say that Donald Trump is responsible is just kind of a little bit silly. They've hit and missed on some for sure. So let's talk about, uh, Ellis, how this isn't good for the Donald Trump's campaign manager to be facing a charge like this. But give me your thoughts as we're uh, getting word of this and it plays out. You know, I'm also an attorney. And oftentimes, you know, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Correct. But just because at your phase, at this phase right now, we don't really know anything. And I guarantee you he is completely innocent and will be cleared of all charges. This woman, by the way, isn't exactly the perfect member of society. She loves the media attention. Her whole family, she acts like she's a Trump supporter, but they are actually very, very anti-Trump. So I think perhaps she is attention-seeking, perhaps dollar-sign seeking. Sometimes when we do these things, it's all about money, money, money. I've seen that in the law quite frequently. So her, you know, her... What she's trying to accomplish here could be financial, it could be fame related. And moreover, just listening to that audio that you just played, it sounded quite theatrical. Oh my God, did you see how hard he grabbed me, wink, wink? To me, it just didn't sound genuine. And I think a jury would agree with me on that one. Now, you're really getting after the victim here. To your point at the beginning, let's wait to see what happens, but. Uh, and it's choppy video. Uh, that's uh, you know, it's choppy to you know to say yeah, you can see him yank her, pull her down. But that is her contention at this point. So Aaron, let's let this play out, right? We don't know exactly. We're gonna let it play out in court, right? Absolutely not, but I'm just also stating facts, which are she has a history of attention seeking in the media, which we can point to specific incidents that I can get into at a later time with the approval of the Trump organization. But this is not exactly someone that is completely innocent. Moreover, her family has gone online, also a fact, and well, said extremely defamatory things about Donald Trump and his campaign. So let's just also give her the respect that she is due, but also consider the source. But again, the innocence is or not in or whether or not he's guilty or not guilty is it's Lewandowski, not her. Uh, Dean, give me your take on uh, that that. One, Mike. We've coined a new <laughs> phrase. Aaron Ellis, uh, good stuff there. Want to let everybody know tomorrow night the final. Oh, that is not accurate. Let this play out in court. Let this play out in court. Okay. We'll see what happens. 
I respectfully disagree for a myriad of reasons. First of all, we know that the paparazzi can be extremely aggressive as well. You know, we've seen several videos here and they all conflict her statement. Yes, this should play out in court, but I don't, I think Trump supporters, you know, are supporting him regardless. And he is the Teflon Don, and I don't think this is going to touch him just like nothing else does. Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. We'll continue to monitor any other reaction on all of that going on with Corey Lewandowski facing a battery charge. We'll see how it plays out in court. Uh, let's talk about the campaign as it goes on to a big state, Wisconsin. I think he did pretty well. I also give Donald Trump credit. You don't just go on radio shows where you're going to get pat on the back and handed flowers and a back massage. Good for him for, you know, being in uh, a contentious conversation for 17 minutes and holding your own. I think the American people should be proud of him that he's just not going to the people that are saying, follow me. I love Donald Trump. Yes, this guy is a conservative, but he's also anti-Trump. So the fact that Donald Trump got in there and fought in combat like he's known to do and proved himself, I think is a testament to how strong he is. Listen, Vladimir Putin is a tough guy in Russia. Do we want someone who's going to kowtow to Vladimir Putin or stand up to him like Donald Trump can? I think it's the latter, not the former, so good for him. All right, so let's get to, this is Troy. We'll see how it affects things in Wisconsin, expecting a big poll uh, out of Wisconsin tomorrow. Aaron, Dean, thanks so much. Uh, we know this, that Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, John Kasich, they're going to be.